Hi everybody, let's see. Hold on, whoops. Shoot. Um, I'm kidding, okay, okay. Foxy Lady, Deb on the Move, T Cup, Lisa H, Sean Sneed, uh, Liza, Nanette. Oh no, I just put, what is that? We put, uh, I'm just going to put in Slack that we're live. put it in the community post so that people can know we're live. Boys, Ivy Lynn, Nufi, hey Nufi, uh, Tina Bina, Tony, I've been taking a census in the extreme Phoenix heat, so I won't make it long tonight. Oh, hi, hi Tony, thanks. Foxy Lady. Hi, Rambles. Um, Renee W. Hey, Renee W. I haven't seen you in, in a little bit. Uh, knitting. Hi. Okay, um, Tracy, Tickety Boo, Cheryl Curtis, Karen McCann, Linda Gelb, Carla, Liza, Lisa, I think I got, let me see, Potter, uh, let's see, Augie. No, you know what is so funny about this knitting? It really does look like she knitted it for me. I, I couldn't believe this. Do you know that I got this at Walmart a couple of years ago? And they had another color. I think I have it in another color. Isn't it crazy? It really looks like it's hand knit and it looks like something she did. It's so crazy. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I had to buy it and show it to her. It's nuts. Carol Clark, Whisper to Me, um, Nana Patty, also we have Katie Cat, Danielle C, Manager of Three Monsters, excuse me. Um, I think I've got most everybody. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, it didn't cost a lot either. Well, nothing, on, you know, clothes wise from Walmart is going to cost a lot, right? But I, I, you, I can't believe it because everybody thinks that she knitted it. If you see it in person, it really looks like something she knitted. You see, it's um, it's got these sleeves. Wait, look, it's got this on this on. The, so it's got that detail. See that knitting, and then it goes down like in a V shape, and um, it's like that on the bottom crazy Let's 
that one? Let me see here. I know Carol, my apologies. I'm watching our nephew again. He says, I'm going to finish up college and exhaust my 10. But I'm getting, oh, then no problem. Just, you know, glad you're okay. Molly Mayhem. <laughs> Welcome, Molly. Miala, hello there. Kevin Leonard, hi. Hi, Carolyn Parrish. Hey, Potter, thank you for becoming a Deputy Rambler. Okay, so let's just look at the, uh, thanks, Sean. I got excited when I finally, I know, right? It, but this was so crazy. When I saw it, I'm thinking like, that looks hand-knit. I, I, and this is so crazy. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what's going on in the true crime headlines first. I haven't, I haven't, since my daughter's been up, oh, I'll tell you what we did watch. Something good. I don't know how many, I know, I shouldn't say I don't know how many. I know a lot of you grew up in the Northeast, right? Did you, do you ever hear of Action Park in Vernon, New Jersey? It was so weird because my, I said to my daughter, what, uh, she, she went back and she's seeing her boyfriend. I said, what are you guys going to do? This was yesterday. And she said, well, we're going to watch, um, Class Action Park. I said, what is that, Class Action Park? She said, oh, it's this documentary on Netflix about Action Park. And I'm like, wait a minute. Action Park? Like Action Park, New Jersey? Yeah. I said, oh my gosh, we went on our senior class trip there. And she goes, you did? And I said, yeah. I said, I have a sweatshirt, everything. I had a great time. I went on that alpine slide. I she goes, you went on the Alpine slide? I said, yeah, why? She's like, people were killed on that slide, Mom. So I'm like, what? So we watched it, okay? We watched it. It's a really uh, good documentary. I had no idea the controversy over that. But it's a good documentary. It's called Class Action Park. It's on Netflix. Is it on Netflix? Oh, excuse me. Wait, it's not on Netflix. I'm sorry. I take that back. It's on HBO. HBO. What, what is that new thing now? HBO Max. That's where it is. Your boyfriend at the time broke his... Oh my gosh. My crazy life. You have to watch it. You have to watch it. When they talk about the burns from the Alpine... You have to watch that. I don't remember anyone in our senior class getting hurt. I do remember going down that alpine slide that I was following like what they said and there were people that wanted to race ahead and uh, there was a science teacher behind me that like was barreling down on me and it, they, they, they didn't watch like the intervals of the people going too close to get it's very interesting to watch it really is it is actually a true crime is what they call it because the owner, um, he didn't want insurance. So he fraudulently created this insurance company in the Cayman Islands. It's, you should really watch it. You should really, really watch it. Um... I'm officially, oh, you're a rambler now. Congratulations, Jambi. Hey. Thank you for becoming a member. So that we did watch that. So let me just, I just if, if, if that's a good thing if you want. What is this now? A very complex case. Former adult movie star charged in murder of Florida man. A former adult movie star is among three people arrested for the murder of a man whose remains were found in a shallow grave in Florida this week. 
nearly two months after he was reported missing. Jeremy O'Dell Peters, age 43, William Shane Parker, age 35, and his girlfriend Lauren K. Wambles, 23, have all been charged in the death of Raul Ambriz Gillian, 51. Wambles has performed in more than 30 movies as Aubrey Gold. That's the 23-year-old, okay? Citing the website imdb.com, the movies were all made between 2015 and 2018 and are largely available through online subscription services. Okay, 2015 was uh, five years ago when she was 18. Um, Wamble's Internet Adult Film Database lists 65 credits with more than 26 million views on Blank Hub. It's a very complex case. Sheriff John Tate from Holmes County said in a news conference, the case began when a Jacksonville County, Florida woman claimed in May that she had been sexually assaulted by Parker. Two months later, while that case was still under investigation, the same woman told detectives that she believed her roommate, Gielen, had been murdered, but she had no proof. Jackson County deputies connected with Houston County, Alabama deputies to investigate Gielen's disappearance. And sometime later, detectives uncovered evidence indicating that Gielen had been killed and buried in neighboring Holmes County. Basically, what we learned is that they had been working a missing persons case for a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, and information had revealed that possibly the homicide had occurred in our county and also the body had been buried in our county, Tate said. Investigators learned that Gillian's last known whereabouts were at Peter's home in Graceville, less than a mile from Holmes County and Jackson County. From yeah, He was believed to have been there with all three of the suspects. Deputies executed search warrants at Peter's home and another nearby finding evidence relating to Gillen's death at both places. Then, with the help of cadaver dogs from yet another Florida county, investigators found Gillen's body in a shallow grave in northeastern Holmes County, just north of Graceville. And she has an Instagram account at AubreyGold underscore XX. All three of the suspects have been charged in Holmes County, but only Peters, charged with being an accessory after the fact and abuse of a corpse, in, is in jail there. Parker, who is charged with murder, is jailed in Jackson County and awaiting extradition, and Wambles, charged with being a principal to murder, is in Houston County Jail in Dothan, in Dothan Alabama, awaiting extradition. Tate said the investigation is still open and there could be more arrests. Uh, and this is her mugshot. Whoops. I'm going to get over there and stay over there. And that's her Instagram. Okay. Okay, and then another story. This is from Colorado. Speaking of that, where's Leisha? Colorado mom sat dead in a car for three days in the emergency room parking lot. Colorado family is demanding answers after a woman sat dead in her car for three days in the emergency room parking lot in Englewood. 
50-year-old Yvette Mooney, was found dead in her car on August 23rd at the Swedish Medical Center's parking garage. She died on August 20th. Authorities found Mooney after family members hadn't heard from her for several days. Daughter-in-law Kendra Garcia said that they thought she had gone to the hospital to visit a family friend, but became worried when she didn't return calls. She couldn't make it inside. She thought, I'm in an ER parking lot. They will find me. Somebody will come. Not three days later, when she's blistered and too decomposed for us to have a proper burial, Garcia said. The family is now pushing for better security at the hospital, but detectives said that Mooney's car windows were tinted and it would have been difficult to see her inside. Authorities are going through security footage for clues. We offer sincere condolences and deepest sympathy to the family and loved ones, the hospital said in a statement. Upon discovery of the event, we immediately no notified the Englewood Police Department and have worked closely with them throughout the ongoing investigation. So far, a coroner has not provided an official cause of death. Mooney, who has been described as a hard worker all her life, leaves behind two children and several grandchildren. And here's another photo. Oops, wait a minute. Wow, uh, gosh. Twenty-year-old father is behind bars after shooting his nine-month-old infant in the face, killing her. Anthony Lamont Merriweather first told police that the baby was hit by a bullet from a drive-by shooting, but later admitted that the gun went off when he was handling it. The baby girl, Iowa Merriweather, died of a single gunshot wound to the head. Her father has been charged with neglect of a dependent resulting in death. According to the affidavit, Merriweather of Henderson, Kentucky, brought his daughter with him to visit a friend in Evansville, Indiana, about 12 miles across the Ohio River. Merriweather and his friend, identified as a witness in the affidavit, sat on the sofa playing video games. Little Iowa was in her car seat on the floor. The witness told police he keeps a loaded handgun between the cushions of the sofa. He said he went upstairs at one point, leaving Merriweather downstairs. The witness said he heard a gunshot as he got to the top of the stairs and immediately ran back down, wherein he saw his gun on the floor near Merriweather, who he said had a blank look on his face. The witness said he retrieved the gun and took it upstairs to secure it and saw blood coming from the baby's head when he returned and Merriweather picked up the child. Both men walked outside with the baby when a neighbor called 911. When police arrived, Merriweather told them he was outside the home carrying the baby when a stray bullet from a drive-by struck her. Police cleared the apartment and searched it, finding a shell casing in the bathroom. Police said that Merriweather later admitted finding the gun between the sofa cushions and taking it out before the shooting. The county coroner ruled the death a homicide. Merriweather is being held at the Vanderburg County Jail without bail. Horrible. Okay, and then we have another father who killed his child. An Oklahoma father is accused of brutally beating and murdering his five-year-old daughter because he believed she was under the control of witchcraft. 
Federal prosecutors have charged 29-year-old Adam Raymond Mason of Bristol, Oklahoma, with first-degree murder with the death of his daughter earlier this week. Investigators allege that Mason punched, drowned, burned, and murdered the girl. The girl's body was found on Wednesday after her mother asked for a welfare check concerned when Mason would not let her speak with her daughter. Deputies discovered the girl's burned remains in a creek near Mason's residence in Bristow, a small community between Tulsa and Oklahoma City. Mason reportedly confessed to the crime and told investigators he believed his daughter was controlled by witchcraft. The U.S. Attorney's Office said that in a press conference, saying, Mason then told investigators that he punched the victim, drowned her, then took her to a creek bed where he set her body on fire. As authorities were searching for Mason after coming upon the girl's body, nearby schools and a child care program were put on temporary lockdown. U.S. Attorney Trent Shores called the case heartbreaking. The alleged victim was set to start kindergarten next week. Now it is time for our criminal justice system to go to work. Federal authorities are handling the case because Mason and his daughter are members of the Muscogee Creek Nation, a Native American reservation, and that is where the alleged crime occurred. This means the state of Oklahoma does not have jurisdiction. Mason was convicted in 2011 of second degree rape. He was later incarcerated in 2014 after failing to register as a sex offender. Father of victim's unborn baby charged with double murder in fatal parking lot shooting of a pregnant woman. A Tennessee man is accused of murdering a pregnant woman and their unborn child in what the victim's family called an act of evil. On Thursday, police arrested 38-year-old Kevin McKinney in connection with the August 20th fatal shooting of 32-year-old Kiara McNeil at a Walgreens in Metropolitan Memphis. Investigators reportedly believe McNeil, who was six months pregnant at the time, and McKinney were planning to meet at the Walgreens to discuss co-parenting. McKinney was not supportive of the pregnancy and had previously pressured McNeil to get an abortion. A witness told police that she saw McKinney emerge from a patch of bushes and shoot McNeil multiple times before leaving in a white sports utility vehicle. That witness later identified McKinney to authorities. McNeil was pronounced dead at the scene. The baby, who will be named Blue, B-L-U, also did not survive. In an interview, family members of McNeil said they were devastated. He has broken my entire family's heart, one family member told the press. The magnitude of hurt, I can't even explain it. The family member also said choice words for McKinney. You are a coward. You are the scum of the earth. You are the worst person anybody could ever come into contact with. Jimmy Sell. Uh oh, what's this about? Hello? Okay, sorry guys. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, so where was I? Um, McNeil's father echoed the sentiment in an interview. I hope he wrote in hell because he done killed my daughter. Antiochus O'Neill McNeil said, The baby would have been McNeil's first. Her family had been so excited about the pregnancy, was planning a baby shower for September. Now they have to plan a funeral. Now they have a funeral to plan. Two days after her death, his first set of library books arrived to the home, and when we received them, it was just devastating, the family member said. They added, It is our prayer justice is served for Kiera. Prosecutors have charged McKinney with two counts of first-degree murder, the family gathered Friday evening at the Walgreens to remember McNeil. Her funeral is scheduled for Saturday. Very sad. Uh, okay, and then we have... Let me, what else? 
six-year-old girl. Six-year-old girl was stabbed to death last week by her mother, who then stabbed herself. And she's been identified by family members as a Tara. Deputies responded to a 911 call for someone in the house on August 19th and found the girl and an adult woman, both with multiple stab wounds. They were taken to a hospital where a Tara died from her injuries. The woman, who has not been identified, was said to be in critical but stable condition at the time. But no updates have been made available, and it's not clear if any charges have been filed against her. The Department of Children and Family Services said that the woman was Atara's mother, but her parental rights had been terminated and she was visiting the child's home. Police said three other adults and another child under the age of 10 were at the home at the time of the stabbings. Deputies said the woman stabbed Atara several times with the kitchen knife and then stabbed herself. A person who organized a GoFundMe for Atara said she was a bright young girl with a contagious smile and huge heart. Very sad. Okay, let's see what's going on over here. A New Hampshire police officer was fired on Friday, seven weeks after he broke several of his estranged of his estranged wife's ribs during a physical altercation that ended with her arrest. Dover Police Chief William Briault said that R.J. Lintendry, a former mixed martial arts fighter, was terminated over multiple violations of departmental policy but he declined to say what those violations were. Although I believe it is vital to be as transparent as possible in an effort to ensure and protect the rights of those involved, no additional information will be released at this time, Briold said. Sarah Latendry, 35, was charged with simple assault and other charges over the July 10th incident in Rawlingsford, which left her estranged husband with scratches on his chest. R.J. Latendry was fired after Dover Police launched an internal investigation of the incident. That investigation began after friends and family members started an online pressure campaign that and held two rallies, one of the Dover Police Station and one, another at the Rawlingsford Station. I can't thank those people enough because I don't think any of this would have been brought to light without them, Sarah Latendry's sister, Jessica Newman, said. It's not how our system should work to get accountability for people to have to continually protest for it. Newman said she wanted to see R.J. Latendry charged with crime, but so far there's no indication that will happen. Merrimack County prosecutors are still investigating the incident, but Deputy County Attorney George Waldron said on July 29th that new charges were unlikely. Dover Mayor Robert Carrier said it was a real sad thing that the Latendres couldn't come to terms and resolve their issues, noting that he'd heard that R.J. Latendre was a good officer, well-liked by his comrades. But both of the Latendres filed for protection orders against each other after the incident, but they agreed to drop their petitions last week. In court papers, Sarah alleges R.J. has assaulted her several times and threatened to take their two young children from her. He threatens to use his status as a police officer to arrest me, the court papers say. He threatens to kick me out of the house, saying that I don't own the home so he can have the police remove me. He threatens emergency orders against me and to take our children away. Recently, those threats are more frequent. Sarah also details her side in the July 10th incident, saying it began over an argument over a cell phone. R.J. put me in a hold and dropped me to the ground, she said. The left side of my head was dropped into a dog bowl. I tried to get free from his hold, and he knelt hard on my sternum. Sarah said she ripped at his shirt and scratched at his chest while trying to get free. R.J. knelt down and forcefully fell with his elbow into my left rib cage. the court papers say. I heard and felt a crack, and I cried out in pain. I struggled to breathe, and then I heard the voice of a man 
who must have come through our door. It was a neighbor. He said, sorry, man, but you're going to, you're going to jail. RJ replied, no, I'm not. I'm an off-duty police officer. In RJ Latendry's version, Sarah Latendry attacked him. During the assault, I attempted to call the police, 911, and she continued to assault me, preventing me from communicating with 911 dispatch. I had to physically restrain her until police arrived. Rollingsford police wrote in their arrest affidavit that based on everything they were told, Sarah Latendre was the aggressor, and so they arrested her. R.J. Latendre has also requested sole custody of the children, saying his wife had been using drugs, causing her to become physically and mentally unfit. Oh my gosh. Well, here's another one from Florida. Sorry, I had to get a drink. Whew. Okay, we have two little boys probably taken on their first day of school dressed the same. Brothers. Two young Florida boys are dead and police say the suspect who killed them was a family friend. Terrible. Putnam County Sheriff Gator Deloach announced Friday that Robert Baker, 12, and Tayton Baker, 14, were both found murdered Tuesday inside a common area of the family's Melrose home off of Shiloh Road. Investigators found a hammer and a knife inside the residence. The sheriff confirmed both items were used as weapons during the attacks. The children's mother said she was asleep with a younger child when the incident happened and woke up to find her boys unresponsive. She called 911 immediately, but the attack left both victims dead. The children's grandfather, who lives nearby, said he attempted CPR while waiting for help to arrive. Tampa Bay Times reported that the suspect identified as 30-year-old Mark Wilson Jr. had been living in a shed on the family's property with his girlfriend. The victim's family, who knew Wilson, had recently moved to the area themselves to be closer to relatives. The children's mother is the sister of Wilson's girlfriend. They did a lot to help them, and unfortunately it ended in the deaths of Robert and Tayton, the sheriff said. It's a really sad case. Because you think about the little kids, you think about the mother. Oh my gosh. Hold on. That's the um, suspect there. Although significant evidence has been found linking Wilson to the killings, the sheriff said they're still working to determine the motive. Unfortunately, Robert and Tayton were the ones who suffered whatever was going through Wilson's twisted agenda, he said. As a parent, the murderer. Robert and Tayton are an unimaginable loss to a family. I can't even, I can, can't begin to understand the anguish these parents are suffering. State Attorney R.J. Lariza said the case is worthy of the death penalty, adding that the suspect attacked the boys without mercy. I can tell you I've been working in the criminal justice system since 1980 and these are some of the most brutal murders that I have ever heard of, Louisa said during a press conference Friday. He attacked these two kids without mercy. Wilson has an extensive criminal history including property crimes and drugs, but no known charges for violent crimes until now. He's been charged with two counts of murder and remains behind bars without bail. Wilson is scheduled for his first appearance hearing on Saturday.
and then we have a child trafficking ring that was um, busted up in Georgia, a sting operation. U.S. Marshals announced Thursday that they found 39 missing children in Atlanta and Macon, Macon Georgia in a two-week action in August called Operation Not Forgotten. The operation rescued 26 children and located 13 others who were considered missing and or endangered. Nine people were arrested on charges for alleged crimes referring to child trafficking, parental kidnapping, registered um, sex offender violations, drugs and weapons possession, and custodial interference, including several on outstanding warrants. Several Georgia law enforcement agencies, including the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, participated in the operation. I cannot say enough about Operation Not Forgotten and the men and women behind it, Georgia Attorney General Chris Carr said on Twitter. 39. That's how many young lives are getting a new start, and that's how we measure success. The U.S. Marshal Service said the operation was the result of several months of planning and coordination between a variety of agencies, both federal and state, including the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. When we track down fugitives, it's a good feeling to know we're putting the bad guy behind bars, but the sense of accomplishment is nothing compared to finding a missing child, says Darby Kirby, chief of the Missing Children's Unit. It's hard to put into words what we feel when we rescue a missing child, but I can tell you that this operation has impacted every single one of us out here. We are working to protect them and get them the help they need. And we'll end with, speaking of that. Um, we have R.J. Kelly, who is not uh, liking his uh, stint in jail. He wants out of jail. R.J. Kelly's attorney has called for his release from an Illinois detention center hours after news circulated that the singer was attacked inside his cell. <sighs> Kelly, 53, and another inmate at the Metropolitan Correction Center were involved in an incident. Greenberg said officials haven't informed them of Kelly's condition and Kelly hasn't called them since the alleged altercation. Regardless, it's time to release Mr. Kelly. The government cannot ensue excuse me, the government cannot ensure his safety and they cannot give him his day in court, Greenberg said. We should not incarcerate people indefinitely because we cannot provide them with due process. And a TMZ report said that Kelly was sitting on a bed in his cell when an inmate walked into the cell and pummeled the singer. According to TMZ, the inmate was very angry because the detention facility was placed on lockdown a couple of times due to people outside protesting for Kelly's release. While Greenberg claimed to not know of Kelly's condition, TMZ said sources told them that the fight was brief and Kelly was not seriously injured. Kelly has been jailed in Illinois since July of 2019 for 26 federal charges, which include child pornography, obstruction of justice, and sexual abuse of a minor. Kelly is also facing 21 sex-related crime charges in Cook County, 11 which were filed in May and 10 in February. The state charges reportedly stem from allegations dating back to 1998 and involved at least three underage gals, girls. In New York, Kelly is facing multiple federal charges for allegedly infecting a woman and a minor girl with herpes. Racketeering and sex trafficking that reportedly crossed state lines. In August of 2019, authorities in Minnesota charged Kelly with two counts of prostitution with a person under 18 in connection with an alleged 2001 incident. And that is headlines.
Okay, hi the Brian Clan. Brian Clan. Okay, so Scooter uh, or whoever are, I have the little toys. Do you have any smallest toys or did you get any? Is she in here? Hi Cindy Elliot. Uh, hi 61, I'm Kathy Allison. Muka, 77, Sharon, Wildlife. Jan B, we got you, yeah, okay. I think my um, chat is behind here. There we go. Still think it's behind. Hi, Nana T. I think I'm still behind in chat here, let's see. Yep, still seven minutes behind. Does anybody want to open the smallest toys? No one. No one. Scooter isn't here. Where'd Scooter go? She's. Does anybody have world's smallest toys? Cole Griffith. Anyone? My chat is stalled. I, I my chat is totally stalled. I have to go over here. Hi, Liza Ward, T Temmy Prang. Thank you, Amy. Uh, hi there. Patch. Scoots is not here. Carol Boys, Nana T. Laurie Gray Lady, you're out in the sling. Oh, in the sling? Really? Oh, boy. Wake Up, Patricia, Sunflower, Amanda Love, Poetry Pebble, Sue W. Pace Niddle, Kathy Martinez, Karen H., Brian Clan. I think I got everybody now there. Hopefully. Hopefully. Dreaming, uh, Patricia. All right, I'll put the. I'm gonna put the number in. Um, I'm gonna put the number in. Let's see. Invite. Copy the invitation. Uh, oh, me. Scoots was, uh, she was around because, oh, you know what it is? You know who's there tonight, right? You know. Sis Littlefoot. Sis Littlefoot. Probably stealing the Care Bears. Sis Littlefoot. It's all her. Oh, you want to call in, Tico? Uh, what, you're in the true, what, I'll put the number in the true crime group if you would like to call in. You can call in. Let me go. I'll put the number in all the good places. Let's see here. It'll go in many brands. And I'll put it in. I'll put it in the true crime. I can find it. And I'll put it in crafts. Okay. Alrighty. I don't know why I'm gonna to try to I'm gonna to try to refresh this whole page here. Hi Dawn Marie. Hello Marie. Trudy Richard. D 
5090 Bell, Mary Kaiser, how are you? Let's see. Manatee, Manatee, Pia Pill. That was some nice stuff you gave Scooter. I hope she does it. She looked kind of scared, but hopefully she'll manage it. Hi, Al. Whose face? Who did you think? You see Scoot's face? Hi, Caroline Connor. Hello. She has crabs. Hi, Dreaming. She has crabs. I'm Caroline. I sent you, oh, MRB, I sent you email. You sent me an email. Okay, let me check it out. <laughs> okay, so let me see here. Whew. Okay, I've got a few emails I haven't seen. Hold on a minute. Okay, a few of you that sent me long emails, I'm going to be able to read them like after. Uh, quite a few emails here. Um, just so you know. Tammy, you sent me crafts. Tammy, I showed these pictures, didn't I? What is this? I thought I could swear we showed these. Um, oh, no, wait, this is something else. What is this about? Hold on a minute. Okay. I had my great nieces and nephews over the last three days and had crafts, had a blast. Tonight I will be listening with an ice pack on my head. I'm not feeling good, but feeling better. I hate that you even have to explain yourself. Oh, okay. Oh, so you're sending me these pictures and this is her with her ice pack over her head. Okay. Let's see. All right, that's Tammy with her ice pack. Poor Tammy's not feeling well. And these are her great nieces and nephews. Very cute. Oh, the little puppies. Little puppies. Very cute. Okay. Juicy. And then there's another. One of our father. Uh, her, oh, Tammy's ball crafts. Oh, these are the kids, right? Uh, Cute. Um, did you just paint those pumpkins or what? I saw a lot of that stuff at the Christmas tree shops today. Didn't leave it till night. I was upset that I couldn't get the stupid mini brands balls for J Bells. Let me see, maybe I'll have to order them. I don't know. Hopefully, I can find some place where I can get two day shipping and get it out to her. 